It's called one of the greatest archaeological finds of the 20th century. Collectors appraise the value of the jewel in the hundreds of millions of dollars. While leading scientists still can't reveal all of its mysteries. This is the Kiev Pechersk Lavra Monastery with its almost thousand year long history. There is hardly any object on the UNESCO World Heritage List that could bear up against such a thorny fate. Tatars, Bolsheviks and the Nazi troops tried to erase this heart of orthodoxy from people's memory. But the Kiev Pechersk Lavra stands firm and rises proudly on the slope of the Dnipro River. Years ago, silence and the smell of freshly baked bread prevailed in these buildings. But today, the premises are filled with the most luxurious jewelries in the den of tourists. Every decoration and jewel tells its own unique story. But the Scythian gold pectoral is the museum's pearl. 1,150 grams of gold, 30.6 inches in diameter, nearly 100 golden figurines are linked semi-moon shaped decoration in a breast. Three tiers are separated from each other by four thick tubes in the form of a twisted plate. The pectoral has traces of casting and engraving. Ancient masters have applied a number of other techniques in preparing the pectoral as well, which modern day jewelers have failed to repeat. The pectoral belonged to the Scythian king, but then fell into the hands of a poet who made this masterpiece of jewelry. And what is the secret content? How did it affect the destiny of those who found it? Ukrainian steps bury many legends and mysteries beneath. The Scythian mounds are among them. Tons of ground are between us and the events that happened more than 2,000 years ago. These structures are the resting place of people who defeated the invincible Persians. In the late 1960s, the rapid development of metallurgical plants violated the serenity of Ukrainian tombs. Hundreds of graves were under the threat of demolition. The Tovsta Mohila was among them. Local authorities had already begun destroying the mounds. The land, mostly black soil, was taken to be used in flower beds or for other purposes. The excavations had to be started as soon as possible. The mound was 8.5 meters high and had 70 meters diameter. The excavations of such a gigantic piece of earth would require heavy equipment and big money. But the Institute of Archaeology lacked such money, and it did have special machinery and qualified personnel. All famous archaeologists were involved in other expeditions. There was no one to lead this excavation. However, just at that time, the head of a manganese plant, Gregory Slareda, provided all the necessary equipment and means. Boris Mozalevsky was on the unattached list at the moment. He wasn't working officially, but he was on friendly terms with Slareda. They agreed that it was the perfect time to start the works, as the mound was likely to be destroyed in the nearest future. The immense love for archaeology encouraged Mozalevsky to begin excavations of the mound. His colleagues used to think the mound was empty. 
Boers made the first excavations, but in vain. Some workers even started saying the mound was not of Scythian origin at all. They refused to continue excavations, but Mozalevsky managed to change their minds. At first, they discovered the burial of a Scythian queen with a small child. Moreover, there were escort people next to the bodies in the mound. Studying the queen's burial, they found three golden bracelets, 11 rings, and a woman's adornment. A grivna, weighing almost half a kilogram. Her clothes and shoes were decorated with gold plates. The first findings promised even more colossal discoveries, but soon archaeologists came across a predatory path. Ancient thieves dug a way to the center of the mound, where the heart of the burial lay. Researchers were shocked at what they saw next. Human bones and wreckage of ritual utensils were everywhere. Scientists realized that not only Scythian plunders, but modern marauders had visited the burial mound at various times. So, nobody was expecting to find anything valuable. On June 21, 1971, Boris Mozalevsky and Yevren Chernenko were working together in the mound. They worked together carefully, scraping the clay layered off the floor. Mozalevsky recalls he felt something under his fingers. Suddenly, they spotted a piece of gold under the ground. It was the Scythian pectoral, a unique and mysterious piece of art. Till now, no one knows who made the adornment, and nobody has managed to reveal its secrets. Mozalevsky and many other scientists believe the Greek masters created the pectoral. They were Greeks from Athens, not from the Black Sea region, to be precise. But why would then they depict a Crimean amphora on the pectoral? How would they know what kind of dishes were produced in Crimea? That forced scientists to look for a new hypothesis. One of them believes Greek masters of the northern Black Sea region made the decoration. Another version says Scythians learned the arts from the Greeks. Just as well, its content poses a mystery. The artistic values of the pectoral are visible to the naked eye. Even a person who doesn't deal with art understands its significance. It is a serious, mystical, and esoteric thing, with the figures representing a particular historic fact. Scientists are convinced it's a model of the universe inscripted on the pectoral. These are three layers depicting three different worlds. The upper level is called the earthly world. It is a world of joy and reproduction. Some scientists think it coincides with the preparations for a new year celebrated in spring. The central layer is filled with flowers and birds. It symbolizes the tree of life. Some believe the central layer stands for the recipe of a healing balsam used by the Scythians during the periods of war. Tearing of animals is the only scene that does not cause disputes. It is a very tragic scene indeed, which means the world of death. The ancient finding is in fact very old and has many mysteries. Some consider it a map of Scythia, which would be understandable only for Scythian kings, priests, and military leaders. 
Others assume it might be a Scythian calendar, which cannot be decrypted. A set of various jewelry techniques and the gold of highest standard made this discovery extremely valuable. The pectoral is unique indeed. No copy of it can be made without the original model. I would estimate this Scythian pectoral at almost $100 million. Only the one who would understand the symbolism and mystery of this masterpiece could pay such money. The pectoral may be also a guide to the Scythian era. It depicts every minor detail of the Scythian's lifestyle. In fact, it contains incredible ethnographic details which wouldn't be found anywhere else, including clothing, food, etc. Besides, the adornment also depicts some domestic animals, even hints at the type of sheep they bred. The Scythian golden pectoral is one of the greatest archaeological findings of the 20th century. It is often put in one line with Tutankhamun's tomb in terms of value. It seems Mozalevsky was destined to find it. The Scythian pectoral has saved his life. In the late 1960s, he was accused of nationalism and therefore was under the KGB's watchful eye. He could be deported to the Moldovan camps. But instead, he joined a team at the Institute of Archaeology. With the help of the Institute, he received a decent salary and apartments in Kiev. This unprecedented finding attracts the attention of scientists from all over the world. At present, Kiev is his home. Uh, in 1974, the pectoral was taken for the first time for exposition abroad. The issue of exhibiting the pectoral in the Metropolitan Museum was resolved through central authorities. That was the only time it has been displayed abroad. Even the Council of Ministers was involved. It's a symbol of power, like the imperial state crown. Do you understand it? Fortunately, this historical finding remains in Ukraine. However, it could have been sold abroad years ago, and we should preserve it as it is priceless. It is our symbol. The Scythian pectoral is displayed in the Museum of Historical Treasures of Ukraine. This ancient riddle haunts the minds of modern scientists. One of the latest assumptions is that the pectoral is a coded message of the Scythians.